Hello, beautiful people. Finally, after three years of beta testing, I mean being available exclusively on PC, New World has relaunched on all platforms as New World Eternum. This MMO, not an action RPG by the way, has completely changed since it was first introduced in 2021. But not all change is necessarily good change. So is it worth playing? I don't know. Let's talk about it. I'm going to start this on a positive note with the really good. New World's new player experience has been evolving ever since the game came out and has only gotten better. And now it definitely feels like they have finally perfected their main story quest. For you lore hounds out there, the game now does a better job of telling the story of Eternum right from character creation and continuing throughout the entire MSQ. There is a more interesting dialogue mechanic, a natural progression through territories that just makes sense, and cutscenes that paint a very clear picture of how the history of the island has shaped it into what we see today. If you're a fighter, they've added a ton of really great solo trials for bosses with interesting mechanics that make it feel like you've actually accomplished something, and there's a lot less meaningless grab-and-go quest steps. Time-wise, the MSQ honestly feels right. You can speed through it in just a day or two if that's what you want to do, or you can take it slow and steady and really soak it all in. Basically, if you hate questing and just want to zoom through the MSQ to power level and start playing the game how you want to, you totally can. And if you love quests, well, there's so much for you to do and enjoy along the way. Another positive thing that I've noticed about the new player experience in New World Eternum is that they've also done a great job of adding tooltips and helpful reminders and notes when you reach certain milestones or interact with content for the first time. For example, quest objectives for things like mounts and factions automatically pop up on your screen once you reach level 20. Basically, the game does a much better job of explaining how to play. So the new player experience is great, but what about the endgame? Endgame PvE got a little bit of love with the release of Eternum in the form of a real deal raid and repeatable solo soul trials. The downfall of the new raid is that it is not very puggable, you do need to work well together and kind of have good comms. This means that, much like the worm raid, many players are probably not going to get to experience this content. I'm gonna be honest with you, I tried to do it with complete randoms two times in between not using consumables, being under gear, and not reading instructions for mechanics in group chat, it was a horrible experience to put it lightly. By the second time I tried, which I did not record, a few people had figured it out and it went a little better, but we still failed. That said, the raid itself is very fun and once you get the hang of it, there are a lot of good times to be had. Also new to the endgame loop are repeatable soul trials. These are versions of the trials that you face in the game from your questing journeys that are leveled up to increase the challenge. You can complete three trials every day and the trials that are available change daily. I am just going to be so for real with you right now, the rewards from these are pretty bad. You're going to get one dark matter and 25 coins for completing each trial, which is just not worth doing it for. You can also get weapons and armor that is just generally undesirable. I imagine soul trials are something that most people are going to do until they receive the new artifact flail, power stone, and then never interact with again. It's honestly unfortunate because some of the trials were really fun fights and they had a chance to make this a very fun daily experience for endgame players. But once again, the rewards are lackluster. Now, there is something to be said about just playing the game for fun and you can certainly have fun playing through these fights. Other than those two things, the PvE scene hasn't really changed much since the last big updates. There are no new expeditions and no new group trials. There is a new elite chess run route in the reworked Cutlass Keys, and we know how much New World players love an elite chess run, so this is actually top tier content. And finally, I do want to mention they are planning on bringing back the usual holiday events like Night Vale Hollow, Turculon, and Winter Convergence. I personally love the holiday events as a fun little distraction from the usual gameplay. In terms of endgame PvE content, holiday events aren't a huge draw, and they are the same ones if you played before you've already experienced them. Endgame PvP is still basically the same and probably just a little bit worse with this update. There are open world, influence races, wars, outpost rush, arena, and the brand new free for all PvP area in South Cutlass Keys. The Cursed Mist ignores all faction ties and puts everyone against each other, in theory, and allows you to collect mystic doubloons and golden coconuts which can be used for upgrading your armor and weapons to the new highest tier of 725. Now, the developers did have the foresight to know that players would still try to group up in the free-for-all area, so they added a bleed that gets applied if you're fighting alongside people for too long. 
Unfortunately, you can't keep people from finding unique ways to ruin the fun for everyone around them. Now players have started forming musket mafias and fighting together separately, attacking players who enter the mist at the same time from far enough away that they don't get the dot. I'm not saying it's all servers, I'm definitely not in all of them, but it's unfortunate. Otherwise, the curse stands as fine content for what it is. I don't like it or dislike it, I would say my feelings after experiencing it are neutral. It exists and honestly that's fine. Remember, we're being honest here, and honestly, Outpost Rush is ever so slightly worse if you can imagine that being possible. Before the update, queues can be really long because of the low player count, but after the update, queues can still be long due to the new matchmaking system. This system requires players to choose which role they are going to be playing as, either DPS, tank, or healer. It's a very simple system with a lot of flaws. For example, allowing tanks to have any weapon as their requirement means that anyone can sign up as a tank, which is a bad thing, kind of disguised as a good thing in this system. I'm gonna break it to you, not every weapon is a tank weapon, so it establishes a sort of false narrative that you can be a tank with a fire staff and an ice gauntlet, for example. However, this is kind of actually a good thing because if not enough people sign up for each role, the OPR simply doesn't pop. With the new matchmaking system, it was easily possible to wait in a queue for 15 to 20 minutes on the first day unless you signed up as a role that you're not actually going to play. Now that some time has passed, those long queues seem to have gone down already. I think there's some healers queuing as tanks. <laughs> so, aimlock and PvP was nerfed before the update even came out, and that's really good. I will say, it is very noticeable when you play that it's in the game. It is a lot harder to shake someone you literally have to break line of sight by hiding behind something, or they do keep dinging you over and over again and you die pretty quickly. OPR is still very much playable, but the aim lock has very drastically reduced the skill gap in the game mode. Oh, and they decreased the PvP experience that we receive from OPR just a little because we're not allowed to have nice things. So essentially, for a number of reasons, OPR is the same, just ever so slightly worse. Despite all that, you very much still can have fun in OPR. If you can let go of the have to win mentality and understand that you're gambling every time you queue up, you can have a blast. Everything else PvP related is pretty much the same and that goes for the rest of the game too. There isn't a whole lot changed at the endgame stage of the game because they've concentrated most of their efforts on polishing the new player experience in the game overall. Overhauling combat systems, adding sharding or layering to decrease lag in high density areas, launching the game on console, you know, things that make a huge difference but that the majority of players might not necessarily appreciate because it doesn't directly impact their enjoyment of the game in a noticeable or positive way. In general, there have been a few significant changes in the population since the release of Eternum. If you thought global chat was bad before, you might just want to permamute it now. I don't know what it's like everywhere, but on Pangea, it's honestly scary. I'm not sure what happened, but the global chat is out of control. Thank goodness for filtered chat. I think a lot of us were hoping that the console release would breathe new life into the game, and in many ways it has. It is really cool running around and seeing the world full again. People are congregating and goofing around in town centers all around Eternum. They're queuing for dungeons and PvP modes. Influence races are packed with racers from all factions. There's even queues to get into some of the servers again. It feels like old times in terms of player population and it is amazing. So the big question is, should you buy New World Eternum or should you come back and play again if you've taken a break? If you've never played before, you should definitely give New World a try. The first few hundred hours of the game, you're going to have so much fun. If you have played before and are thinking about starting over, I can say from experience that leveling up a new character was actually fun and I enjoyed trying out all of the new soul trials. Coming back and finding a group for the new raid could also be fun if you're at the end game stage and don't want to start over. You could also venture into Cutlass Keys to see all the changes and check out the new PvP zone. Other than that, there isn't much for you to do that is new at the endgame stage yet, so if none of that sounds interesting to you, I'm sure that they'll have more time to focus on new and exciting endgame content in future updates now that the new player experience is complete. I've been playing this game on and off since it first came out in 2021, and I can honestly say that I'm having fun playing again right now. How long will that last? I'm not sure. We're going to see. But I do recommend logging in and giving it another shot if even the tiniest part of you wants to play again. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking to join me in a tournament, I have characters on Lilith, Marama, and Pangea in the U.S. East Coast region, and I stream on Twitch on most Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. As always, like, subscribe, share, and most importantly, be kind to one another. See you next time, friends.